Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're doing some glass etching. Well, I know that I've done glass etching on the show before, and the last time I did it, I did it with my power carver and some diamond burrs, and I fashioned a little Pops candy jar. And that was kind of cool, and I enjoyed it, but I'm going to show you a completely different process today. Now, what I have is I have this, and this is a jar that I keep paintbrushes in. Uh, the problem is if you have a can or that sort of thing that you keep brushes in in the shop, they get full of sawdust, etc., etc. So I have them in this closable jar um, that keeps the sawdust and off of them and keeps my brushes clean. And I thought it would be fun to etch something into this jar. So this actually starts off not here in the shop. In fact, the majority of the project is not here in the shop. It's done inside. And it all starts off on the computer with the Cricut machine. Well, the project starts off in Cricut Design Space. And the first thing you want to do is click New Project. You can do it either up here or down here. It's up to you. And once you click it, it will bring up a fresh canvas for you to work on. For this glass etching, I want to use two different images and some text. So normally the program uses an SVG file, but you can use other files as well. You just have to do some modifications to them. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So the first thing that you want to do is you need to upload your image into the canvas area. So you just want to click the upload tab and then you can click upload image. And from there you'll click browse. Once you get to the location of the image that you wish, you can click open and that will bring it into your area where you can now work on it. Once you're in this area, you'll have three options, simple, moderately complex, or complex. So you need to decide what you think your image is according to the description, and then choose one. In this case, I've chosen simple. From there, you can just click continue, which brings you to this area. Well, this is the area where we fine tune our image and we can see our three paintbrushes here. But if we click preview, this is what the Cricut sees. So we need to do a bit of modification for that. We need to tell it what not to look at. So if we click our backgrounds, these are the areas that we will erase essentially. And it will put a checkerboard pattern in those areas to show us what it is that we're clicking. At this point, we can click preview and it will show us what the Cricut sees. And if we look here along the edges of our paintbrush, we can see that they are not clean line images. There are all kinds of distortions, little black dots that stick out and protrude from the edges. So we now need to clean those up and erase those imperfections. So in order to do that, the first thing that I want to do is we want to click Erase, which will select our eraser, and then I will slide the slider along to adjust the size of it. I only really want the largest brush here on the palette. So I will erase the one here in the bottom right hand corner by pressing and holding the left mouse button. And from there, you can just drag it around and erase that brush. I'll erase this one in the top corner a little later, but now it's time to work on the imperfections of the larger brush. So the first thing that I will do is I will adjust the size of my eraser to make it much smaller, and then I will click Preview. It's now time to start cleaning up our image, and as soon as you click and hold the left mouse button, 
your preview will be gone and you can now carefully go around the edges of your image and clean up all of the little imperfections. I kind of wish it would stay on the screen. It would make it a lot easier for the cleanup, but you will have to alternate between clicking preview, seeing where the imperfections are, and then carefully holding your left mouse button and carefully going along the edges and cleaning up any of the imperfections. This is a time consuming process, but it's well worth it in the end to take your time, do it properly and get a good image if you don't already have an SVG file to use for your project. So slowly and carefully continue with the cleanup of the image and when you're happy with it, and once we get this other paintbrush erased, we can click continue. We now need to save it as a cut image. So we can just click and highlight it as such, and then rename our file up into this little box right here. We will just name this one paintbrush, and then click save. Once you get that done, it will automatically place the image into your list of pre-saved images that you've collected in your profile over the time of you working with the Cricut. So now that it's in with our images, we can highlight it and then insert images into our project and it will automatically put it here on our canvas. But as you can see by the numbers, it's a little too big. This is over 14 inches, which is way too big for our jar. So I would like to drop it down to five. So in order to alter the size, the easiest way is to click up here in the height box and punch in your new measurement and hit return and that will automatically size it for you. At this point, we need a second one because I want to have two paintbrush stencils. So right click, click duplicate, and then drag your duplicate off to the side to have it ready for cutting with your project. With our brushes done, it's now time to add the text. So we will just click the text tab on the left hand side and that will open up a text box where we can add the word brushes. Now I want the text to be vertical and the best way I know to do that is to hit return after every letter so that you end up with the text running from top to bottom vertically as opposed to horizontally. And once you're finished, of course, you can just click somewhere, anywhere on the canvas and it will bring up this text box completed. But it's a little too tall for me. It's almost 10 inches tall. So just like we did with the brushes image, we can click the height box and type in our new height of five inches. Hitting return will resize the entire unit. However, for my liking, it's a little too narrow now. I would like this to be a little wider. So because the text box proportions are locked, I need to click this little padlock here to unlock them. And once I get that done, you can see that it's unlocked. I can just head up here to the width, type in my one inch and hit enter. The problem with doing that is that it will make the widest letter of the group the one inch, in this case the H and the U. I want the rest to be one inch as well because right now they look a little odd. So in order to do that, right now they're grouped together. You need to ungroup them and for that you'll just head over here to the top right corner, click ungroup and that will give you individual control of each one of the letters. From there, you can just click the individual letter, head up to your width, change it to one inch, and at that point, you'll be able to make it so that each of them look properly proportioned to each other. So I'm going to continue and change each one of the letters individually to be one inch wide. And then there's one last step that we want to do. 
Once I'm happy with my letters, their size, and their positions, I need to highlight the entire group of letters once I get them situated where I want them. And then we'll head up here to the top right corner, click group, and as well, head right down here to the bottom and click attach. At this point, the word brushes is complete and ready to cut. There's one last image that I want to add to my project, so I will just go through it quickly here. So we'll just click Upload, then Upload Image. From there, Browse, and we can select the item we want, then Open. And it will bring it into our image area to work on it, just like our JPEG was brought in. The difference is this is already an SVG file. So there's nothing that needs to be done other than rename it and then head down to the bottom right corner and click Save. Once that's done, all you need to do is highlight the image and then insert the image into the project with this tab in the bottom right corner. As you can see, the image is huge. So because it's already an SVG, there's not much to do to it. So I just need to resize it by dragging it to the proper proportions. I also want to rotate it and I can do that by grabbing a hold of this little icon in the corner and spinning it around the way that I want it. And when everything is said and done and I'm happy with the way the image looks, just like I did with the word brushes, I need to highlight both the text and the image, click group, and then click attach. At this point, the project is finished and all I need to do is save it and it's all ready to be cut. Now it's time to set up the machine. Well, now that we have everything set up on the Design Space app, we can turn our Cricut machine on and let it connect. And we will just click Make It. And it is sorting it onto the mat. Now, we don't necessarily want it set up like this. I want these to be a little spaced out so that we have room around our design. Something like this. That should be perfect. And once you're happy with how that's laid out, just click continue. And then we can see that it's asking us to load our material. So just like I showed you in the tutorial I did on the show not too long ago, you just load your mat and once you're happy with it, push your load button. And then once you're happy with that, you just click the Cricut. And we'll just let it go. And now that it's done cutting, you can just push your eject button and it will release your cuttings so that you can use them. Well, with the Frisket paper cut uh, or vinyl, whichever you're using, I'm just going to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to give the front of this glass a good cleaning. That'll get any oils off of it and allow the adhesive of the Frisket paper or vinyl to uh, really stick to the glass. So give that a good cleaning and then let the alcohol evaporate. And now at this point, I'm gonna carefully take my frisket paper here with my design cut out of it. I'm gonna peel it off and very carefully just place it where I want it on the jar. And then just rub it down into place.
Well, I don't know how well it shows it, but we have our stencil all rubbed down here all the way around. You want to make sure that it's rubbed down very well on the edges. In our other method that I showed you, I used a power carver in order to etch the glass. But in this case, I'm using Armor Etch. And what this is, it's basically an acid compound that etches and frosts the glass wherever it touches. So because it etches it wherever it touches, you can see the importance of having your stencil down really well. So I'm just going to open this up here and using a little stir stick, give this a little stir here. And all we're gonna do is basically lay down a light layer of this wherever the stencil is. It doesn't take a lot of it. So just carefully place it wherever your glass is exposed. You want to be careful not to rub it too much and lift up your stencil. And then we'll just do here where the paintbrush here is. All right, and if you're absolutely sure that you have all of your stencil covered with the armor etch, put your lid back on and let that sit on there for 10 minutes. And now that the 10 minutes is up, here's the beauty of this stuff. You just carefully now, don't scrape it hard because you don't want to peel up your design, but you can scrape up what's excess on your project and put it back in your bottle to use another day. So I'm going to scrape all this up and then what you want to do is leave your design or your template on here and take it into the sink, use hot water and rinse off all of this acid without peeling off your stencil. Your stencil has to remain. And once you have it rinsed off, you can peel off your stencil, just like this. And then our center spots, just like this. There we go. And we'll just give that a wipe. And look at that. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera. But uh, you know what? Let me put a black background behind it so that you can see what it looks like. It's not showing up very well on the camera. Let me just remove this and then you should be able to see it. There you go. Check that out. That looks great. Got a little paintbrush there and as well the brush. Now you want to be careful. I can see some imperfections here. That's where I didn't have the acid placed perfectly or sometimes a bit of the stencil lifts up. And if the acid gets underneath that, well, you're going to end up with an issue where whatever this acid touches, it etches. But there you go. There's a different method to etching glass. And we don't need a video of me doing the sides of this with that large paintbrush. So I'm going to do that off camera. And when I get that done, I'm going to come back and show you what we ended up with as our final product. And there you have it. Etching using etching paste instead of using the diamond burr and power carver method that I showed you before. Guys, this method here with the paste relies heavily on you being able to put that stencil down perfectly. You need a really good seal all the way around each one of your objects, whether it be uh, a letter in a word or whether it be like what I did here, paintbrushes. No matter what it is, text or image, all the way around the outside, you need to make sure that it is adhered really well to the glass. The reason for that is that etching paste will 
get into those gaps. Once you're spreading it around like that with the little stick or stir stick or whatever you use, you can't help but to push some in those little areas if there's a gap. And because of that, as soon as it gets in there, whatever it touches, it's etching. And that includes glass underneath little air pockets on the edges of your letters or images. So be sure that you really put your stencil down well. Now for this project, I use Frisket paper and I have had that roll of Frisket paper for a million and a half years. I actually bought it back in high school uh, when I was in an art school there and I bought it to do my airbrushing so that as I had it on my project, it would prevent overspray onto the rest of whatever it was I was airbrushing at the time. And it works great for this stuff as well. It resists the, the acid, although the acid is very light. Don't think you're going to burn your hands off doing it. Um, but either way, it resists the acid. It does a great job. It adheres well to the glass. It's easy to remove and very easy to work with. So a major majority or a major part of this show was showing you how to do the design on the Cricut cutter. So what if you don't have a Cricut cutter? You don't need one. If you don't have one, you can very easily use an X-Acto knife and cut out your design. You can go as intricate or as basic as you like. If you can cut it with an X-Acto knife, you can etch it in the glass with the paste. So don't be inhibit inhibited or discount this project that you can't do it because you don't have this fancy Cricut cutter. Truth be told, I don't have one either. It's my wife's, so she's kind enough to let me use it for my projects from time to time. So, guys, honestly, you need to give this a try. I line the inside of this with a little bit of black cardstock, and that just helps the um, etching to really show up. That's just the way I like it. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but that's just what I prefer. But honestly, guys, don't discount this. This is a lot of fun. It's easy to do, and that paste is just fantastic. So this is the story. Speaking of that paste, as I mentioned in the show, it is reusable. I have had this little container for years and years and years and years, and we've done all kinds of etching projects with it. Everything from corners of picture frames to little accents on a front door window to uh, beer pint glasses for friends and family to candy dishes. We have done a ton of stuff with this etching paste and it's still going. So it's not that expensive. I think it's like less than $15 for the jar and it lasts forever. I'll post a link to it down below so that if you're interested, you can get some for yourself. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. We have a lot of fun here on the program and there's a lot to offer and a huge variety of projects. I'm sure you'll find something that'll interest you. Once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you like the content. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.